Okay, here's one more test of the rigid body dynamics in the new version of Blender 2.66. And in this case, what I've done, I've added some additional features. I have this slanted plane like that. And there are my objects up there at top. I actually had more earlier. And I was trying to find out, basically what I'm trying to do is find out where the performance issues are and what kind of functionality is involved. So what I have in here is you can see the, unlike the other video that I had that was similar to this, I have a couple of these and I have a gear attached to the end like this and it's then it runs this gear and then I have a particle system on this and this is going to be a dynamic paint surface as well so in fact that can run it but it runs a little slow about seven and a half frames per second let's look at it in camera mode kind of give you an idea all right let's see All right, so it started up, and here are my particles right there coming out of here, just for starters. And let's see, and there is the dynamic paint surface. This blue plane is actually moving to the right, as you can see. And then here comes my stream of energy. And we'll go look at a, close, at a couple of the issues here. So there's a lot going on. Like you can see right in here, the gears are starting to separate. So I still don't have, but it's just a really, I just have a basic, you can see how it's wobbling along in here. I should have used a Boolean modifier, but the first time I did it with it, it wasn't working right. So I just said, I'll just wing it real quick because I wasn't really planning on any particular design. But let's go look at it up close when it gets going. You can see the gear, and these were just kind of quickly done gears. Gears are actually quite a tricky subject. Um, it requires a fair amount of mathematics to do gears correct. I missed that one. You can see they're starting to separate a little bit when it bounces around too much up in here. And it starts, and we see when it slips, this stops on well, this case like this. So look, look at it here a little closer. Let's run, let the run, whole thing run again. And I have, uh, you know, I had to put all kinds of things to prevent it from slipping around. Oh, I have an animation of it here, too. I'll run here in a second. I did a quick rendering of it. But it's nice because even though you could, you know, pre-calculate all these as rotations and keyframe them and things like that, this definitely gives it that mechanical feel to it because it's like a mechanical device. And this is just for fun, you know, putting the dynamic paint onto the surface with the particles as it goes. But you can see my frame rate's down around 7.5 to 8 frames per second. But I pretty much know what I need to do now to optimize it for performance and the things I need to do to make a cool, fun thing to run at least 15, 20 frames per second. That's kind of the minimum to make it look halfway smooth. All right, let me stop this and we'll go grab the animation in here. So, all right, here's an animated version. In this case, you can I was emitted these line particles, but during the rendering, you won't see the dynamic paint. I didn't set it up to see the dynamic paint. So you know, you're making a factory line. You know, maybe you're making a product in your maybe this is salt you're sprinkling salt on your food product I mean you could do virtually anything I could imagine all kinds of things I could do with this but don't underestimate the challenge for doing this you know this is you know at the very least you better check out the math videos if you're just an artist and you're not really comfortable with trigonometry because you need to know these kind of distances and angular velocities and um, linear velocities and these gear gearing is really an important thing and that's really requires partial fractions to do your gearing right if you're using just simple gears where you're just using the same number of teeth uh, that's one thing but if you really want to do accurate you want know, you want it one gear to turn exactly 1.74 times compared to the other one it's not as straightforward as you might think But it's pretty powerful, pretty fun. I don't really see any issues as far as the stability of the physics engine. This is just me. I just have a couple models overlapping each other like that. But 
when I actually get down to designing something, you know, besides just testing it out, I'll clean all this up. I'll make it more stable in here so it doesn't bounce around. But yeah, it kind of gives it gives you the idea. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.